Hi, I'm Roxy Monroe with KidLit TV here at ALA in Austin, Texas, and I'm very happy to be chatting with Jennifer Donnelly from Scholastic. And by the way, that was a fabulous um, preview of the spring list coming up. So tell us about your new book. I believe it's Stepsister, a YA book. It is. My new book is Stepsister. Here it is. It's, uh, it's YA, and it takes up where Cinderella leaves off and follows the story, not of Cinderella, but of her ugly stepsisters. Cinderella was one of my favorite stories when I was little. Um, I was fascinated by it, but not because of Cinderella, because of her ugly stepsisters. I really loved Cinderella. Um, I felt sorry for her, but I couldn't identify with her. Um, she was always so good and so kind, and at five years old, I wasn't, and she was um, so smiling all the time, no matter how hard her life got. She was smiling when she cooked and cleaned. She was smiling when she churned the butter. She was still smiling on the last page of the book when she married the handsome prince. This guy who, at the time, to me, looked older than my dad. <laughs> I didn't understand that. But I could understand her ugly stepsisters. They, they were more somebody I could relate to. Um, when my grandmother actually closed the cover on that book, and years later, they were the ones I always thought of, not Cinderella, but what had happened to them? What had made them the way they were, and did they ever overcome that? And uh, did you have a nice resolution? I think so. I, I can't give too much away, but what I really try to do, um, I was hoping that when I started the story that the stepsisters would really start talking to me, and one of them really did, the younger one. Her name is Isabel, and it's really Isabel's story that we follow throughout the book. And we follow her on her journey to sort of question the whole idea of the happily ever after. Is redemption only for the pretty princess, or can the storybook villain have a shot at it too? And who really defines beauty? What does it mean? And Isabel, throughout the journey of the book, comes to define beauty on her own terms and finds out that it's the passion that really burns inside each one of us, and it's, um, it's our courage and our strength. Wow, that sounds so fascinating. Can you tell me a little bit about your um, writing process? Ah, uh, let's see. It's just, um, it's very idiosyncratic. I, you know, I get at it the first thing I can in the morning and I pretty much go at it as long as I can all day long into the evening. Um, some writers have this set limit of so many words and so many pages and I find that just doesn't work for me. I do what I can do in a day and, and that's pretty much it. It's how much the characters are giving me and how much they're talking to me. So uh, you had told me earlier we were chatting that you have, uh, this is like your 14th book? I think, I think it is my 14th book, yes, yes. What an accomplishment. So um, how did you get into children's books and uh, what in, kind of inspired you to start writing? I was um, really fortunate to have a mom, she's still alive, who's an amazing verbal storyteller. She's German, so I got a lot of the old fairy tales. I got a lot of stories about her life in Germany as a child, and I just grew up with this um, being immersed in stories and words and having this expectation of words and stories in my life. And as soon as I could, you know, hold a pencil and start to write, I started writing on my own. And it's just, it's continued from there. Oh, that's fabulous. Now, um, you've been at TLA, gosh, you just said you got here last night and you're uh, doing a signing? I am, I'm doing signings, I'm doing a panel, I believe at noon. Um, it's uh, my first time at TLA and I'm just bowled over by the, um, I'm actually really deeply touched as well by the amazing passion for stories that I'm getting and sensing and by the librarian's very, very deep commitment to their young readers. It's, um, it's very inspiring. Well, TLA is the largest state conference, and when I first started coming here, I was told um, kid-led authors are treated like rock stars. Now, do you have, um, is there any experience in your childhood with a librarian or a library that really made a difference to you? Very, very much so. Um, one of my earliest childhood memories is being this terrified five-year-old on the first day of kindergarten. I didn't know anybody, and I didn't know what to sit, uh, where to, where to sit, and what to say. And I was just miserable. And somehow I made it through the morning of my first day, and in the afternoon our class went to the library. 
And there, this woman named Mrs. Allen, who had this very kind and gentle smile. Shout out, Mrs. Allen. Mrs. Allen. Um, kind, gentle, smiling face. She must have seen how unhappy I was because she took me by the hand and she helped me find the thing that I have always turned to in times of trouble, a book. And suddenly things didn't look so grim. Wow, that's really touching. And it shows that one individual person can make such a difference. Um, so tell us now, what are you working on? I am just finished, well, I've finished up Stepsister, and I'm on the road promoting that book, and I'm starting another fairy tale retelling, but it's, it's a little too early to, to go too deeply into it. But um, I'm very excited by it and, and very, very into the main character already. And so how long, by the way, does it take you to write a book? My first book took about 10 years. <laughs> I'm happy to say I've improved on that time. My publisher's very happy, too. And now it's taking me about a year, start to finish. So, um, if you could meet any children's book author or illustrator, past or present, um, who would that be and why? There are so, so, so many, but uh, because of my love of the early fairy tales, the Grimm's Brothers version, these, the sort of um, unpolished, uh, very naked and raw versions of the fairy tales, I want to meet the Grimm's Brothers, Jakob and Wilhelm, and I, I want to follow them on their trails as they went and they talked to all the the elders and the storytellers who collected these poems and these stories and these retellings and and I want to be there and I want to hear it live. Wow, that sounds so exciting. And so by the way, you live in upstate New York or not upstate, but I live in the Hudson Valley. Yeah. Um, about 2 hours north of the city. Great. And uh, so do you have other plans here you're, um, while you're in Texas, or are you just heading out, or oh, you look like you do. I do. I have some family in Austin, so I'm going to uh, spend some time with them, and I'm going to Franklin Barbecue. No matter what, I'm going to Franklin Barbecue. <laughs> Great. Well, um, so uh, this is so exciting. I'm so happy you've come, Jennifer. And stepsister looks. And by the way, the cover is extremely cool. Thank you. I love this cover. I don't know if viewers can see it, but it actually sort of sparkles the glass effect in the light and I think Scholastic did an amazing job with it. Just so happy. It's always nice when your publishers uh, do the take, go the extra mile for you. Well thank you very very much for coming and um, good luck at TLA and uh, hang out with a lot of cool librarians. Will, thank you so much Roxy. And bye bye from Kidlet TV and ALA.